today baba is emphasizing a lot on imbibing knowledge and then baba is talking about how we would be able to share the knowledge with intoxication in hindi it's a very beautiful word falak so you know with that fervor and that radiance we would be able to share knowledge with others if we have imbibed the knowledge and what do what does baba mean when he says imbibed the knowledge because obviously baba has so we are all those children who are listening to the murli and who are uh, who obviously have faith that whatever baba is saying is true so uh, we have we are those children who are in agreement with knowledge and we understand that what baba is saying is true so when you are on a in a place mentally where you think that okay whatever baba is saying is true and absolutely correct is that place known as imbibing knowledge so baba says no so we are all in that place where we know that whatever baba is saying is true but the thing is it is the truth is fine but is it my truth so when you have imbibed knowledge then that knowledge is your truth and you know when you have so there may be a gap between what you think is correct and what you have imbibed in yourself okay so uh, so your logical mind might say that you know whatever baba is saying is correct but your heart what is in your heart what sits in your heart that may be very different so that uh, if there is a difference in the two then you know even if you explain to somebody maybe you know that this is the truth and i should explain it to somebody so you might explain it as seva or as your spiritual duty but then that intoxication won't be there okay so that intoxication through which they also feel the happiness that this knowledge should give that won't be there so that intoxication baba is asking us to have and just think about the points of knowledge so when you think about the points of knowledge do you know which points of knowledge will occur to you first the points of knowledge which you have imbibed properly so let's say the knowledge of the soul sometimes you know you have imbibed the knowledge of the soul so then that point will occur to you and you will speak about it with a lot of fervor and zeal and intoxication but do you have equal dharana of the other points like let's say the the fact that we were deities 5000 years ago and this was satyuk do you talk about this point with the same zeal or do you talk about brahma baba descend uh, brahma baba being the instrument into which shiv baba descends and teaches raj yoga to uh, again you know change us from brahmins to deities do you talk about this point with that kind of zeal that is the question or the point that the images that you see in the temples are the images of our erstwhile form so we are the deities 
to which those images correspond. So, you know, when we were deities, these very souls, then we looked like that and that is my image. And do you, when you visit the temple, do you think about uh, whatever is shown in that image, how does it correspond to your Sangam Yogi or your Satyugi state? So, how much do you think about these things? And how much have you imbibed it? Because you see, uh, Baba today says that you may or may not have imbibed it properly or fully. And um, Baba uses a word which is dull students. <laughs> so, Baba says if you are a dull student, then you may or may not, you may not have imbibed it properly and you will not be able to inspire others to imbibe it properly. Now, what does Baba mean by a dull student? So, you know, a dull student is usually a dull head. So, we usually say this is a dull head, so dull student. Now, similarly, when we come into Gyan, Baba has told us one important thing. And that thing is that you need a pure intellect so that knowledge can be imbibed in it. So, Baba has told us that, you know, Sherni ka dood sone ke bartan mein thehrta hai. So, you know, this knowledge is so powerful that you need a golden aged, a pure intellect, uh, a golden intellect for it to be imbibed in your buddhi. And if our buddhi is filled with clutter of the old world and those old belief systems, then even though we know the knowledge and we understand it is true, it is not something that I have imbibed. Okay, and then Baba has also told us that for imbibing the points of knowledge, you have to churn on them. So, you see that when we listen about the knowledge of the soul, we churn on it. We think about, you know, how many times have you practiced that I am a peaceful, I am a pure soul, many times. But then the other points of knowledge, we don't churn enough. Don't you think so? We don't sit and think about how, you know, in this 84 birth cycle and especially, you know, if you churn about this knowledge of uh, the cycle or the staircase, then you think about how, what, what all transpired in these 84 births and then how, you know, that same Brahma who was Vishnu or Sri Narayan in the first birth, he changes, you know, and there is, there is the saying, night of Brahma. So, you know, in the night of Brahma, he becomes ordinary and then how Sri Baba descends into him and how he again adopts us and makes us Brahmins from Shudras and changes us into deities. So, when you think about this stuff, it gives you immense happiness. And when you have created that happiness within yourself, felt that happiness within yourself, then when you explain it to others also, that happiness is, uh, you know, that is communicable and that happiness they also pick on. But if you have not churned that point enough, then that point is not giving you happiness and then you explain it to others but in a very dull fashion and they also like take it okay, this is some kind of information that the BKs are giving. And um, I will tell, give you one example. So yesterday I was giving a course and there was this uh, couple and uh, I was explaining the Siddhi Ka Chitra, the 84 birth staircase to them. And then I told them that once we leave the body, we go and sit in the soul world first. And then when we go and sit in the soul world after this Vinash, then uh, where will you sit 
in the you know very close to baba or somewhere in the back so what would be your position so then they started thinking and then you know that um, suddenly that lady asked me that uh, so didi uh, what do we have to do to sit very close to baba <laughs> because right now i don't have the confidence that i will sit very close to baba so you see that you can you can inspire others to also think about their position when they sit in the soul world or their position about when they come to satyog but that thing has to be imbibed in you there is a lot of difference between understanding knowledge having faith in knowledge and imbibing knowledge yes uh, and the difference is uh, very comparable to eating food and digesting food so you know uh, if somebody has eaten food then the food will give the taste and the food will you know uh, give the flavor but if it is not digested well it will not create health and when you are not healthy you cannot make a difference so that's the difference so when we listen to knowledge we feel good we understand it there is intellectual satisfaction there is you know uh, there is uh, happiness that comes from knowing something but then when you imbibe it 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 gives you strength it gives you a lot of other things which just listening to it and having faith in it doesn't give you so baba says have you imbibed knowledge now you see today baba makes a very good point in the murli baba says in abu there is there is the temple of the adhar kumari and the kumari yes so uh, there is the there is the temple which is called the kumari kanya mandir and then there is the temple which is called the adhar kumari ka mandir and then baba says that people go and visit both these temples and in those temples there are many alcoves like kotri so you know in one temple there are many kotris different different places where many uh, such other kumaris or many such kumari kanya statues are placed now baba says in now people in bhakti don't know who these other kumaris are or who these kumari kanyas are now baba says i explain to you that brahma kumaris so baba's children they are of both the kinds so you know those who when they come they are a kumari so unmarried and then there are others who have been you know who have been on the vicious path and then they have changed their course and now they are they have embraced a life of celibacy so baba says both these kinds they are both brahma kumaris it's not like one is a real brahma kumari and another is a fake brahma kumari <laughs> it's not like that so baba says both kumaris and other kumaris are equally worshiped in bhakti because when baba comes both these uh, both these entities the ones who have never been on the vicious path in this life and the ones who have retracted and taken the path of purity both of them are equally brahma kumaris and when they perform the acts that baba asks you to then you get the status equally so baba says this is why both of them are worshiped and baba says similarly when you look at the temples and the deities sitting in the temples do you understand that 
these deities, these temples and these figures, they are all um, they are all representations, they are all memorials of whatever is happening in Sangam Yuga. So, Baba says, have you imbibed these points? And when you imbibe a point, you do not say that, you know, this is a temple and Baba says we were a deity. No, you, it is in your attitude. You feel happy that this is my temple. So, when you imbibe something, it becomes part of your smriti, it is part of your consciousness and it colors your attitude and perception and, in, and it becomes part of your vision, you know. And I will tell you one experience shared by a sister and uh, she, um, she shared that when they were little children, they were four years of age. Uh, she and her brother, so very, very young, you know, three, four, five years of age. At that time, their parents came into Gyan. And their first introduction to history was that we were a deity. Okay, so they did not list, they had not read the history that is taught in school. And they went to school and read history later, but their first introduction to history and geography was that there are the three worlds and then uh, 84 births back you were a deity and this was their first introduction. So then she was sharing, that sister was sharing that when we went to school, we found that these people are all very misguided and they are talking about history in a different way and they don't know perhaps and then when they came home and they told their parents, so their parents said that that history you study and write in the exam, but this history is the real history that we taught you. <laughs> so then she said it was very easy, we never had any confusion, we knew that these people are teaching something which is different and we have to just give an exam in that and the real history is this. And we always in our inner world, our perception, our attitude was colored by Baba's history. So we never saw it differently or there was no, but you see when we do not come as children and there is so much of other stuff which has already colored our inner world and our consciousness and then it is sitting right there at the core and then we listen to Baba's knowledge. Then a lot of purification, a lot of churning has to take place before this truth becomes a part of your attitude and perception. So when Baba says that have you imbibed knowledge, this is what he means. and. The more we have imbibed it, it is sitting in the core of my heart, then you know it is there in your attitude, it is there in your perception and when you know something is in your attitude and perception, you can look at everything from that angle. And I tell you when knowledge you have imbibed, you see any scene, you see any behavior, you see any drama you see any creative work, you can explain it knowledgefully. That is the beauty of imbibing knowledge. Just like you know, a, a person with vicious drishti can see viciously everything because that drishti is vicious. Similarly, a, a soul who has imbibed knowledge can see everything knowledgefully and when you explain to somebody, you can take very simple examples and explain because you know when you, when you have imbibed the knowledge of the cycle, it is so easy, you look around, everything is going cyclic. What is not cyclic? Yes, there is the day cycle, month cycle, the cycle of uh, what do you say, seasons, the cycle of uh, the years of the month, the cycle, water cycle, everything is moving in a cyclic pattern. 
and you can with that attitude knowledgeful attitude you can take examples from everyday life and explain and it is very very logical so baba says that have you imbibed the knowledge have you imbibed the knowledge of the soul the supreme soul have you imbibed the knowledge of how baba comes and performs his act of creation or what is creation uh, sustenance and destruction according to baba what is the method and have you imbibed the knowledge of the cycle so baba says ask yourself have you imbibed it and if you have imbibed it then you can inspire others to do the same okay so this is something that baba is talking and baba is talking about many points today there are several points that baba is talking about about imbibing and explaining and then baba is talking about refraining from having debate with anybody so do you understand that um although whatever baba is telling is universally true still not everybody will imbibe it the same way or accept it the same way and um you see that baba today gives the example of um other religions or other sects in the murli and if there is another sect or another religion then baba says although you know the knowledge of the cycle is true but they will never believe that you know you have to be pure because they have never been in the religion of purity they have not been a deity so what makes complete sense to you will not make complete sense to them and baba says that in that case arguing uh, will not lead you to the conclusion that you know that they agree that you are right so you will not reach that place so i think in these places and in every place i think when we conduct courses also every soul is coming from a certain place in their journey and you give them the whole knowledge but then you just you are just uh, inviting them to understand and imbibe as much as they want to and if they want to be a deity then you share with them the the method of raj yoga and how to remember baba and stuff and if they are not on the same page with you it's okay yes and then you don't argue with them that this is right and what you are saying is wrong because there is something called the truth and there is something called what's right for everyone everyone individually okay so the ultimate truth is what baba tells us but individually we uh, we will we will find consonance with it differently because according to our journey we will uh, we will not find uh, we will not find every point accurate and uh, so uh, so let's understand this well so let's say there is a soul and that soul came from the copper age okay and in a religion where there was impurity and there was no mandate of celibacy or do you know that there are many religions that that preach and propagate purity at least among the uh, like uh, like christianity so they will say that it's okay if you are a christian living in a family then you can be you can go into um, lust but if you are a christian and you are staying in the church so you are a you are a nun or you are a uh, you are a pastor then you have to be celibate yes so there is celibacy taught in christianity 
but that celibacy is not for householders that celibacy is for those staying in the church right but there are certain religions in which celibacy is not taught at all let's say islam so in in the muslim religion they don't talk about celibacy among those who preach religion also so you know even the founder or the people who teach the quran they are allowed to remarry and have several wives and everything right so in that religion there is no teaching of purity so when there is no teaching of purity there then a soul who has come initially from the soul world into that religion if you talk about purity will that make sense to the soul <laughs> so that that thing won't make sense to the soul so similarly baba says that uh, in arya samaj today baba is giving giving an example of arya samaj in arya samaj they are not believers of deities so they don't believe in idol worship so they are not even worshiping the date the idols of deities so if you tell them do you want to be a deity would they want to be because they are not even worshiping those deities so obviously there is a discord so so the truth is there was a deity religion there was satyu but these souls were not there they came later on so even if this knowledge they listen from somebody or even in bits and pieces they get to know what the brahma kumaris are teaching or preaching they wouldn't find they that knowledge cannot sit in their buddhi because it's not in their memory so this is why baba always tells us that those souls who were in satyug will get this knowledge accurately because whatever is in your memory has to emerge for you to find consonance with knowledge okay so this is why baba says that there will be you will meet many people many members of society who will not agree with this concept of being pure in a household and embracing absolute purity and that's okay but baba says one thing which is true for every soul is the knowledge of the soul and the knowledge of the supreme soul so you know whether that's a person that's a soul from the muslim religion or or an anar samaji or whoever this two things one is i am a soul and the second is i am the child of the supreme soul who is a point of light and that we come from the soul world these points are universal for everybody later on you know in the cycle yes purity absolute purity divine virtues these things maybe people don't understand but then these three points that you are a soul you are the child of the supreme soul and we all come from the soul world these three points are universal truths which apply to every soul and in every soul's memory there is this truth hidden somewhere so baba says don't go into debate with them about the other stuff and for that you can use one small yukti what you can say is everybody has the freedom to preach what they believe <laughs> okay so if somebody is talking about you know you are wrong and even if you are not debating somebody says you are wrong and whatever you are doing is not right then you say okay we live in a free country and we are free to preach and practice whatever makes sense to us and why do you have to interfere in that and i will give you an example of this there was this one brother and he had come to the center and he told me you know you have been misled and you are on a wrong path and all these bks are 
uh, you know, teaching you stuff which is not true and this and that. And I told him, you really think that I, who have been on this path for 12, 13, 14, however many years, in this 15 minutes of time of your discouragement, I will leave the path and come with you and do whatever you say. <laughs> do you really think like that? So even if I have been led astray, you are not the person I am going to listen to and fall in the right place. <laughs> so you are wasting your time here. So I told him, there are only two things we can do. Either you agree to what we are teaching or you leave. There is no third thing we can do here. So if, you, if what we are teaching doesn't make sense to you, it's okay, I understand. But it's not like you have come to teach me and I will understand whatever you are teaching. So then he started laughing and he said, so I said, you see, I'm talking very practically. I'm not saying that, you know, maybe 10 years down the line, I realized that, you know, uh, whatever I thought was not okay or this or that. But this discussion is not going to do that. <laughs> so then he left. So you see that there are very amicable ways in which you can send the message that we agree to disagree. Okay, so we just have to agree to disagree and Baba says you don't have to debate there, you don't have to prove there and remember this, this is a very important piece of teaching because I think that many a times BKs enter into arguments and you try to prove something which is not necessary. It's okay if somebody doesn't, but anyways give them the knowledge of the soul, the knowledge of the supreme soul and the knowledge of the soul world and teach them how to detach from the body and remember Baba and teach them the practice of detachment teach them how detachment will give them perspective and if you teach them this even if they imbibe it in various degrees it's okay but that's your job you have to give them the knowledge of the soul supreme soul and the soul world even if they don't agree to the other stuff about purity and divine virtues so this is something that baba is underlining today and then Baba today says that, you know, uh, just like physical personalities, so you see somebody with a big car and you see somebody very gaudily dressed and uh, somebody carrying themselves off physically in a very, uh, in a very attractive manner, then you also become body conscious, don't you? <laughs> So, if somebody has great physical personality, that great in appearance and these days we, we have all heard stories about people who are very, uh, who are called influencers on Instagram and, and they are carrying themselves off very beautifully and attractively and then when you get a sneak peek into their real lives. <laughs> so that is a disaster. So they live in a very messed up manner, but apparently they are all, you know, they present themselves in such an attractive manner. And Baba says that when you look at somebody who is having a physical personality, you know, whether it is dress or living or lifestyle or the way they put on makeup or the way they walk or talk, then what happens is you also become very body conscious. So a physical personality has the strength to pull you into body consciousness. And Baba says, what you don't know is that if there is a spiritual personality, which is if the soul, what is the main ingredient of spiritual personality? Purity. So Baba says, if there is purity inside, if there is complete purity in the soul, then that purity has the capacity to 
pull somebody into soul consciousness also. And um, I remember that there was uh, this sister who had shared something about Prakash Mani Dadiji. And she said that when I met Prakash Mani Dadiji, I don't know what happened, but I felt like I want to be like her. And she had, she was born and brought up in a different religion, different country. She was born and brought up in a different language. So she said, I was what we call Westerner, but I don't know what happened. But when I came to Dadi, I felt like I have to be like her. And there was this great pull that was there in the personality. And that's the pure, that's the personality of purity. And Baba says that if you have that, then it becomes very easy, just like, you know, body conscious people are, and in economics, we call it the demonstration effect. So, uh, in economics, there is this term called the demonstration effect. And have you seen that, you know, your neighbor buys a fancy car, even if you can't afford it, you take a car on loan and buy it. <laughs> because that has made you very body conscious and it makes you feel that there is an urgency to buy a car, even if your office is just 10 minutes of walking distance. <laughs> So, that is the kind of effect that other people's physical personalities have on us. So, think about the power of spiritual personality. But do you know why we are all experienced in the power of physical personality, but not in the experience of spiritual personality? Because not many souls have that personality of purity. And the world needs to see more and more examples of the purity of pers the personality of purity, so that you know this personality of purity becomes famous, and more people adopt it. And and when all BKs, you know, we Brahmin souls, we carry this personality of purity, then we will attract so many souls. Uh, into spiritual lifestyle and becoming pure. And don't you think that when you are dressed in white and there is a clean heart and a soul conscious attitude and the feelings and vibrations of good wishes and good feelings, then don't you think you create an environment where people are attracted to be like that? So, people are attracted to be like that and Baba says, this is the kind of personality that we need to create and carry around and a personality is a very, um, very powerful instrument that pulls others in a certain direction and Baba says, take care to have that personality of purity which pulls people towards a spiritual lifestyle. Okay, Om Shanti.